That's so wonderful. <laughs> I was so enjoying being with you that I almost forgot that I was supposed to preach this morning. <laughs> the presence of God is amazing in this place. The atmosphere is so thick. <laughs> and I want to uh, really honor the leadership of this church, Pastor John, your wife, Pastor Pat, all of you, and the leadership. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We can do better than that. Come on. I really, I'm really glad to be here with my wife and family. We don't have often the opportunity to travel together, but this time we were able to do it also for the generosity of this church. I want to thank all of you. And we couldn't be today with the Quippers Room where we are after two years and a half if it was not for the help and support for all the Quippers family. So again, thank you for the depths of our heart. We love you. We appreciate you. We pray for you. And if you come in Rome, you, are, you will be a guest in my father's house. My dad is a pastor. We always had guests in our house. So if you come, my mom will be very glad. <laughs> so I don't know if my wife, Tanya, we need an attimo. My wife wants to come. Just I want you to see her. <laughs> she will kill me for this later. Thank you. So this is my wife. As you can see, she's younger than me because I'm very smart. <laughs> and uh, together, together we are pastor in the church, and I cannot be the man I am. I couldn't be without her. <laughs> Grazie a tutti per averci ospitato, grazie per la vostra opportunità di venire qui per la mia prima volta in, in America. Thank you so much. This is my first time in America and I couldn't do it if it wasn't for you. Thank you so much. Vuoi dire qualcos'altro? Abbiamo pregato molto per venire qui e ho sentito che il Signore farà grandi cose attraverso tante persone qui. We prayed a lot before this trip just for you and we felt in our heart that the Lord wants to do amazing things in this church. E ci sono delle persone qui che hanno delle, dei doni meravigliosi e voglio incoraggiarvi a, a esporvi con Dio in un modo soprannaturale. I feel there are people here with a lot of gifts and talents and the Lord wants to encourage you Step out, step out in faith because there is more for you. Okay. Thank you, grazie amore. <laughs> She preached to me all the time at home. If you are married, you know what I mean, right? <laughs> This morning, I would love to speak to you about Two kinds of anointing. Two kinds of anointing. First of all, you need to be anointed to understand my English. Is that correct? <laughs> so I speak English with a Roman accent. And I'm going to say something very cool now. <laughs> Greetings from the church in Rome. It was maybe only me and the Apostle Paul that could do that, right? <laughs> We started Equippers Church two years and a half in uh, Rome. We started really uh, with a handful of people, just a few friends. We didn't know the outcome, so our very first gathering was on a Wednesday. And we didn't have music, we didn't have much but pizza and me ready to preach. One of the two would work. That was my idea. I thank God that that first meeting turned 
to be today in a church of over 300 people. I just received a text message from back home. They finished both services to today in both campuses. We had today 19 new visitors and 281 people attending. I don't know about you, but I can tell you something. For Rome, being a nation that has been oppressed by religion for thousands and thousands of years, this is a miracle of the Lord. We couldn't do it. We are not that smart. But we learn something, that when you listen to the Holy Spirit, He will make you look smart. Tell the person next to you, you need to be listening more to the Holy Spirit. <laughs> clap, clap, clap. <laughs> so this morning I want to speak to you about two kinds of anointing. Not many people realize that God has given us two kinds of anointing, not only one. There is one anointing that is within every believer. The moment you say yes to Jesus, the moment you welcome him in your heart, or I should better say, he welcomes us in his arms, the Holy Spirit with his anointing come to live, to abide in us, within us. I want you to see the first scripture is found in 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. And the Bible says that the anointing, as for you, the anointing you received from him. Let's say together, received. English is my second language. But if I did my grammar well at school, received is a past tense, isn't it? We already got it. There is an anointing from him that we receive and remains in you. Say in me. I love to do that. Can we try again? Say in me. And you don't need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things. And as that anointing is real, not counterfeit. Just as it has taught you, remain in him. So the first kind of anointing is an anointing that we receive by grace. So we receive it by the sacrifice of Jesus, by the tears of Jesus, by the blood of Jesus, not by our tears, not by our blood, not by our sacrifice. It is a grace gift. It is an anointing that abides in every believer. Every believer has it. The worst and the best. If you are a believer, you have an anointing. But there is another type of anointing that not many people know about. The anointing that comes upon you. The, appoint, the anointing within you is always there. Is in your spirit. The one who is joined with the Lord is one spirit with him. That anointing will never leave you. You and the anointing are one. You and the anointed one are one. But that's in your spirit. That's for you. But there is another kind of anointing I want to talk about today. And I want to then explain how the two anointing operates together. There is an anointing that wants to come upon you. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, you shall receive power and ability when the Holy Spirit come upon you. If my grammar once again is correct, upon can be divided in up and on. There is a spiritual Anointing that wants to abide in you. And there is a spiritual anointing that wants to come upon you. What is the anointing? That's my definition. The anointing is 
a God-given supernatural power to obtain exceptional results. I want to read it again because it sounds so good. If you tag me, if you post it on Facebook, you please tag me, okay? It, it's not right to steal in church. The anointing is a God-given supernatural power to obtain exceptional results. It's one thing to sing. It's another thing to sing under the anointing. It's one thing to speak. It's another thing to speak under the anointing. It's a supernatural ability. And the anointing I'm talking about today has two main expressions. One is within you, and the Bible says the anointing teaches you. The anointing in you wants to teach you, wants to guide you. And the other one is an anointing that comes upon you, and that's not to teach you, but that's to empower you. The anointing in you is for you. The anointing upon you is for your service. The anointing within you is forever. The anointing upon you is for a season and for a reason. Tell the person next to you, he is preaching good. If we, if we look at the life of Jesus, He is our example, He is our model. Jesus came to show us God, but Jesus also came to show us man. If you look at Jesus, you can see how God looks like, but if you look at Jesus, you can also see how you should look like. Jesus is the perfect man, anointed with the Holy Spirit. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, we see that Jesus was full Let's say full, full of the Holy Spirit, and left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit. The fullness was that anointing within, and that anointing within came to lead him for direction. The anointing within wants to lead you, but then we know that he went into the desert and he was tempted, he overcame all the temptation. I would love to expand a little bit on the temptation, but we don't have much time. But I just want to tell you this. The devil was after Jesus' words. Why don't you speak to this rock? Jesus, uh, the devil was after Jesus' words. Worship? Why don't you bow and worship? And the devil was after Jesus' obedience. Why don't you jump? Because these three main things, if you learn to worship, if you learn to speak according to whatever God is telling you to speak, if you learn to obey the Lord, your life will never be, will never, never be, Anymore in the hands of the evil one. Can you say amen to that? And Jesus had to overcome the temptation. His words had to be in the hands of God. His hands, his obedience had to be in the hands of God. Total surrender. To be totally anointed. And in fact, as he came out of the desert, verse 14 says that Jesus returned to Galilee, in the power of the Spirit. Jesus returned. He was full, verse 1, verse 14. He returned in power of the Spirit. The Spirit came upon him. He was in him when he was full. That's why he was led. But now after overcoming the temptation, the Spirit came upon him. You know, in the Old Testament, when the Spirit was coming upon somebody, the Spirit would transform that person into another man. Yeah. 
He would be bold, strong, fast. Elijah could outrun a chariot when the anointing was on him. Are you with me? And Jesus preached. As soon as the anointing, as soon as the anointing came upon him, Jesus preached and people marveled. Who is this guy? What is this authority? What is this new message? What is this? I'm telling you what is this. It is the anointing upon a person. It is the anointing of God upon a person, upon a vessel who is willing to say, Lord, I want to surrender to you. My life has no importance to me except for your anointing, for your kingdom. I want to be used by you. I want to do your will. I want to move like you move. I want to speak like you speak. Is anybody in the room? Am I preaching to the right crowd this morning? Lord, anoint my life. I don't want to only be led by your spirit. I want to be a tool in the hands of your spirit. I don't want to be blessed only. I want to be a blessing. Mm. I don't know about you, but I'm preaching myself happy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Can we just lift our hands for a second? Just be grateful to the Lord. For His anointing is in this place. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your anointing. Wonderful Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God upon your life is for your service within your life. Is for you. The Spirit of God in you. It's His presence. The Spirit of God upon you. It's His power. So many of us have just had a glimpse of what the anointing is about. So many of us have just bumped into it sometimes. But the anointing is looking for, the Holy Spirit is looking for a man, a woman, a vessel who is available for his power to be released. I came here for the other side of the world to release a prophetic word in this church, to release an apostolic word in this church. Central Coast is going to be full of campuses of Equippers Church that are going to be filled with the presence of God, full with the power of the Holy Spirit. And God is not going to do it through me. God is going to do it through you. Can we give an end of praise to the Lord in this moment? The Holy Spirit in you is His person. The Holy Spirit upon you is His purpose. When the anointing abides in you, it abides because it wants to create the character of Christ. In fact, the, anoint, the anointing in you results in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, Self-control. By the way, I want to give you here a little pill. Do you want it? About self-control. Self-control is not actually the best translation we can have there. In Timothy, is written, it is written, God didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of, you know, power, love, and self-control once again. It's not the best translation right there. The best translation would be, a spirit of controlling your environment. Woo! <laughs> Woo! I don't know if you got it. You were never supposed to be dominated. You were never supposed to be the tail. You are called to be the head. You are called to be led. You are called to, called to be empowered by God. You are called to 
You are called to change the nations. You are called to make history. Are you with me this morning? Sometimes believers don't realize that the greatest miracle is not that we believe in God, but is that God believes in us. He believes in you until the end. He believes in you. That's why he anointed you. He believes in you. You can do it. You can be the man God has called you to be. You can be the woman God has called you to be. You are that person. You know, when we study the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and in my life I I have had a lot of experiences and I still want to have some. When we study the life of the Spirit, it's a never-ending study. I was reading the other day, Acts chapter 1 once again, and in verse 4, Jesus said, Wait here, the promise of the Father. But then the disciple asked, Well, when are you going to establish the kingdom? They were expecting a political kingdom. And Jesus said, Well, those timings are in the hands of my Father. But I promise you this. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So I was studying this scripture that we all know about, thinking that it's the same promise. Thinking that when Jesus said in verse 4, the promise of the Father will come upon you, and in verse 8, power will come upon you, is the same thing. But I discovered two different Greek words in that text. One is plero, which means feel. Filled inwardly. The other one is pleto, which means furnished, equipped. The Holy Spirit in you is revealed by its fruits. Your character is like Christ. The Holy Spirit upon you is revealed by His gifts in operation in your life. You are preaching good, Francesco. Thank you so much. Thank you. This means that if I put my my life in the hands of God, inwardly and outwardly, I can be an instrument into into the hands of God. I can see life transformed. I can see crippled walk. I can see death here. I can see life marriages restored. I was praying when I was very young. I was in my 20s. I was praying for a baby who died in the womb of her mother. And when you are that young and you don't know much, you act in faith easily. Have you realized that? Sometimes our experience rob us of our boldness. The baby was diagnosed dead for six hours. The mother was bleeding on the bed and they were waiting for the doctor to come and clean the womb. I didn't know what to do, but I felt, I heard the voice saying, you now bind the spirit of death and call the child back to life. <laughs> Me? This woman was not even a believer. But something came upon me. It's not something we know what we are talking about, right? It's the Holy Spirit anointing. When He comes upon you, you, He transforms you in another man. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke death and I speak life. Suddenly, a kind of glory entered that little room in the hospital. A fog. And the woman stopped bleeding and started crying. But these tears were not tears of pain. They were tears of deliverance. They were tears of the presence of God. Are you with me? I left that room waiting for the doctor to operate on her. I went home. I never really heard for a couple of weeks from them. I just obeyed, but after two weeks, 
somebody knocks at the door of my office. It was the husband, the wife, with a pregnant big belly. As we prayed, the power of God entered into that womb. The child came back to life. And today, this baby is called Simon. I wish they would have called him Francesco. They didn't do it. It's called Simon and he's a healthy boy. Can we give praise to the Lord? The Holy Spirit in us will prepare us, will strengthen our character, will work, will make our, sho our uh, shoulders larger so that we can host the presence, so that we can receive the Spirit upon us. There are three points I want to share with you this morning to learn to flow in this powerful anointing. Do you want to know them? The first one, in order for you to learn how to flow in the anointing upon your life, you need to be hungry. You need to be hungry for more. You need to be hungry for the presence of God. Hungry for the things of God. Jesus was more hungry for the Spirit upon him than of food. That's why he went on a fast for 40 days. That's why he was willing to give up every distraction, to give up everything, because he was hungry for the Spirit. He was hungry for God to use him mightily to save the world. And the only thing that can save this society today is not a better preacher, it's an anointed preacher. It's not a better kids' school, it's not a better music ministry, it's an anointed ministry. Are you with me? We need to be hungry. You know, one of the symptoms of a sick person in the natural, they lose appetite. True or not? When somebody is sick, they lose appetite. They don't want to eat anymore. That's the same symptom that I have discovered in Christians who are spiritually dying without realizing it. They lost their appetite for the things of God. They lost their appetite for the revelations of the Word. They, they, just, they are just happy with what they have. They are happy with what they do. I want, to, I want you to know God has more in store for you. God has more in store for your children. God has more in store for your family. Are you with me? The other day, I was with my key leader in the church. And uh, sometimes my greatest joy is not to talk with them, but is to listen to them. We were maybe 25 on a Wednesday training, evening, and I said, guys, before I start, I want to hear from you. Tell me what is happening this week in your life. Well, pastor, I started a new group. Three persons got saved. One got healed in their back. It was amazing. They all now want to join our church. Oh, wow, this is good. What about you? Oh, pastor, I went to my group last week. We prayed for the job. We pray for this. We pray for that. God answered our prayers. I went to the other one. Oh, pastor, you don't know. I received this text message from my rel relative in the other uh, city. And they told me they are watching us online. And God is doing miracles in their family through the streaming. What about you? What about you? What about you? After I listened to all of them, I was so overwhelmed. Because they preached to me. Because it's not about a man. It's about the anointing. We always look for better methods. God always look for better men. We always look for an anointed plan. God always look for an anointed man with a plan.
You need to be hungry. I am a hungry person. I'm not satisfied. John, you have an amazing church here, but don't be satisfied. Most of the church is still out there. Your kids are still out there. We are not existing for us. The church is the only organization that exists for its non-members. True or not? We have a purpose. We are anointed for a purpose. But we need to be hungry. Hunger is a sign of health. Hunger is a spiritual sign of spiritual health. The second thing we need to always cultivate in our life, if we want to learn to flow with the anointing of the Lord, is to be humble. Humility. Stay teachable. I, I've been preaching the gospel for many years. If the worship leader who played the piano can help me. I've been preaching this gospel for many, many years. My dad is a pastor, as I told you. My mom is a pastor. My brother is a pastor. They always pastor me all my life. And I've been preaching for 20 years in 25 nations of the world. I've seen a lot of great things in my life. I've been on TV, national TV. I have authored 12 books. The Lord has been blessing me a lot. But one day I met this guy by the name Bruce Monk, and he ruined my world. I was quite happy until I met him. And he told me, Francesco, you have been blessing a lot, but you haven't built much. I was preaching around the world. I was enjoying my life. I would preach Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, two services, and then go home, enjoy three or four days of studying, reading, fishing. When was my last time fishing? I don't remember. <laughs> was before the church. And this man of God tells me, Francesco, you have been blessing a lot, but you haven't built much. And then he comes very close and he goes, I see you. I see you. But I look behind you. I see nothing. When are you going to build for the next generation? Ministry is not about you. Ministry is not about blessing only. Ministry is about building a legacy. Building an apostolic house in your nation where you, your children, your children's children will be sent out like arrows and plant churches all over the nation and plant churches all over Europe. Francesco, you've been blessing a lot, but you haven't built much. You know, it hurt. It took me 15 years to build that ministry. It took all my prayers to get on TV. It took all my time to write books and see miracles and see that. And this guy, a man of God, in 30 seconds, he just knocked my world down. But you know, when he left, that sentence stayed in me because the anointing in you will teach you. The anointing in you will lead you. And as you grow in your understanding of your anointing, the direction that anointing is giving you, you will be positioned for a greater outpouring of the Spirit upon you. We started a church today just because I was not stubborn, but humble enough to listen to the old man. I have many young guys in my church. Most of them, if not all of them, have a call of God on their life. But 
Some of them are very teachable. Teachable spirit. Some of them are not that open for corrections. I want you to know. The Bible says that God resists the proud. But He will give grace. Charis from Greek means ability. God will give ability to the humble. As we keep ourselves hungry for the things of God, humble, ready to receive correction, ready to receive instruction, ready to change if you need to change, the anointing of God will have room in your life. My third and last point, honor. If you honor the anointing upon your life, honor is a big word, isn't it? The Bible says, honor your parents and you will have a long life and a healthy life. Health and life are hidden in honor. The Bible says, honor your leaders. The Bible says, honor your God with the best. The Bible talks a lot about honor. Honor your boss at work. Oops. Jesus was an anointed, was God, but also an anointed man. Because all his life was about honoring the Father. All his decisions were about honoring the Father. Honor will make you do the extra mile. Honor will make you serve even when you don't feel qualified. Honor will make you go even when you don't want to go. It's true or not? Honoring that direction, honoring that voice, honoring that call. God is looking for vessels of honor. Is anybody here this morning with me who wants to say with me, Lord, use me. I want to be a vessel of honor. One time, there was a great woman of God named Catherine Kuhlman. You probably heard of her. And they asked her, what is the kind of vessel that God can use? And she said, God is not looking for a golden vessel. God is not looking for a silver vessel. God is looking for an available vessel. Are you available this morning? Are you available for the master use? As you serve in the house of God, as you honor in the area where you are assigned to be, as you do your best, I want you to know God will do the rest. God is looking. Sometimes we think we are the ones who are praying for the anointing. We are the ones who long for the anointing. I want you to know the Holy Spirit wants to anoint you more than you want to be anointed. Can you believe that? Can we stand in the house this morning? The anointing within you is represented in your character. The anointing upon you is represented in your charisma. But you need to grow in both. You need to learn to grow in both ways. Jesus grew before men and Jesus grew before God. Jesus grew as a king on earth in his dominion. But Jesus grew as a priest high priest before the Father in his relationship. The anointing upon you comes as you learn to relate with your heavenly Father in the Spirit. The anointing within you grows as you learn to listen into your earthly matters. God wants you to grow in both ways. And if you do that, your life will